morning, everyone. My name is Mary Lynn Evans. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I'm from Bulltown, West Virginia, and I'm a proud hillbilly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of us just came from the March on Blair Mountain, and some of you here may not know that story. But 90 years ago, the largest labor insurrection in American history happened at Blair Mountain, West Virginia. 15,000 coal miners who had been denied their basic human rights and enslaved by the coal industry and their political allies marched five days, 50 miles, to Blair Mountain to call attention to their desperate plight. They were met by the U.S. military and the West Virginia State Police and the coal company thugs that had been hired. It was also the only time in American history that the United States government ever planned to bomb its own people, the striking miners. Today, we march on Blair Mountain to call for the immediate abolition of mountaintop removal mining. Yeah. And we have found during that march that little has changed in 90 years. West Virginia is still owned by the coal industry and their political supporters. We've been denied accommodations, We've been harassed, we have been intimidated, and when we leave here today, we are going back to West Virginia and join that march to demand an abolition to mountaintop removal mining and to demand that our basic human rights as American citizens be protected. I want to read you a letter from one of the most incredible women I have ever met. Judy Bonds, I got to know very well uh, through our film, Coal Country. And Judy became a dear friend of mine, along with the rest of her family. And this is a letter from her daughter that she asked me to read today to the EPA. My mother, Julia Bonds, lost her life in January of this year, like so many other people in our communities. She was consumed by cancer. Although she often spoke of the high cancer rates in our area and was concerned about the black water that came down our once pristine rivers, none of us realized the overwhelming number of victims surrounding us until she was sick. To put it bluntly, taking her to the hospital for an oncology appointment was like attending a community meeting. Nearly everyone we knew was there. The EPA and other government agencies may know the black and white facts, but we are here to put a face to those facts. Do they know the sickening amount of explosives used in Appalachia every day? How often have tyrants in other countries been shamed for using gases and explosives on their own people? Tell me the difference. How are we any more or less expendable than any other race of people? We hold our children in the crook of our arms when they're born and say the same prayers for them as you do for your children. We have the same hopes and dreams that you do. And as we teach our children to spell their names and say their prayers, don't ask us to tell our children that we, the very people that brought them into this world and have loved to protect them, should stand by as they are polluted, blasted, and killed. From the very beginning of our nation, that is what true patriots did. that were interested in nothing but money and riches and could care less about any human life that stood in their path. We expect the EPA and our government to protect us from these greedy tyrants like Massey Energy that put more value on a lump of coal than on a human life. My family and I have made quite a number of sacrifices and enemies taking this position. Friends and family members no longer speak to us. We have endured
report for daily verbal attacks at our home, at gas stations, at grocery stores. My mom and I both have been physically attacked and threatened. We have been shunned for taking a position of caring about the health and children of the community we live in. But it is worth the fight because we as Appalachians are worth the fight. Will the Obama administration and the EPA enforce the law? Most definitely they will. The people of Appalachia have sacrificed so much and have stood alone, risking so much for so very long. It is time for us to call on others to stand with us in this ethnic cleansing. Since my mother's passing, I've thought a lot about the afterlife and what God has in store for us. I believe that God will reunite my family in March for Collar, the place where we were happiest and the closest place to paradise before Massey Energy blasted, dozed, and polluted our home beyond recognition. Someday, I will join my family in heaven and we will fish and swim in the unpolluted stream that once was Little Marsh Fork. We will lay in the shade under the pawpaw trees. We will dig for ginseng, pick blackberries, and hunt wild mushrooms that were there before Massey's dozers plowed them under, along with all the vegetation and animals on that land. We will ride our bicycles on dirt roads that are no longer covered in diesel fuel and wave at our neighbors that once lived there with us before Massey took their homes and evicted them. And finally, we will hike to the top of a hill to rest and look upon the hills of West Virginia and the hollers that are untouched just as our God intended. Lisa Henderson, daughter of Judy Bonds. Thank you very much.